Cool. Jake Hamilton. Good day, Chicago. Ladies, good to see you guys. Hi. How are you doing? Just one second. Just a real quick question. Is there yeah. a way that we can see Jake bigger? It's just oh, his, no, no, no. his screen. Yeah. Thank you so much. You want more of me? Yes, we yeah, do. Yeah, of course. Wow. That's the first anyone's <laughs> ever asked of that. I can, I can promise you. <laughs> Going, we don't need Seriously, I love both of you. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Um, and I got a thousand questions for you. Um, Sandra, I'm actually going to start with you. One of the things I most love about this film is this idea of how much a young person could take away from it, the way it would speak to them, the lessons they can learn from it. Was there ever a moment in your life where you could have used this film? And I'm sort of curious, how differently would the life of 13-year-old Sandra O be if you had seen Turning Red? Oh, great question. Hugely different. I think that, you know, one of the great things about Turning Red is that it actually gives a little bit of language to talk about emotion. I was a highly emotional kid. I was so emotional as a child. And I think my mother didn't know what to do with it. You know, obviously I became an actor. So that was a very, you know, constructive thing. Um, but I, I think, you know, something like this as a, not even as a guy, just an example to say, if you're having too big of emotions, are you, are you having a big panda? Are you pandaing out? You know, are you turning into your big red panda? Uh, that that's something that I wish I had a little bit more language. That actually leads into my next question. So, Rosalie, for you, I'm sort of curious. So, because obviously, so much of this movie is about how emotions have the power to transform you into someone other than yourself. Hmm. Is that kind of what acting is like? Using your emotions to sort of transform you into a different person. Mm -mm. Well, that's an interesting one. Um, I personally think. Yeah, kind of using your emotions to, like you said, transform to another person, because I feel like every character I've ever played or every script I've ever picked up has a little bit of me. It's kind of I'm kind of taking my own experiences and putting them into the script mm -hmm. and trying to sympathize with the character I'm playing and understand where my character is coming from. So who then to that point, just like you have your friends that bring you back for each of you, who's that person that brings you back? brings me oh back. I can tell you my my best friend I met when I was six mm -hmm. Ooh. and um I just saw her we just went on a finally a girl's trip to Mexico um, yes. so I mean that's 44 years of having the same best friend and I would say for me growing up in Canada the same group of friends you know that we met in primary school uh, junior high and high school uh we're we're still all, all friends yeah I'm back home I do have a squad where I've known them in my entire life and I'm just, they just, they keep me grounded, yeah, yeah. you know? They're always get, there for me. If, I, if I'm if i upset or anything, they'll they'll be there. What I love about my best friends is they are in no way impressed by what I do for a living. They're like, oh, cool. You, you, talk, <laughs> yeah. to, you, you talk to movie stars, good for you, good for you, good for you. <laughs> As we wrap up, you know, when you're, when you're 13, uh, your parents do a lot of things to embarrass you or annoy you. It just so happens. Mm -hmm. uh, not on purpose. Know, not, not on purpose, not, of not course, purpose. not on purpose, yeah, not on purpose. Um, uh, so Sandra, I'm assuming, you know, you've I would imagine been a bit like a, like a mother figure to, to mm -hmm. Rosalie. What is the most annoying thing that you think you have done uh, or embarrassing thing that you think you've done, maybe it's her work mom. Oh, as her work as mom? Work mom. Uh, I would say that she would probably have to answer that. Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully not too So, so Rosalie, pretend that she's not there. It's just <laughs> okay, you and me okay. talking. I'm trying to think. I guess there was this one moment where we were doing this photo shoot and then I think BTS uh, Dynamite came on and then she started doing like the the hearts and I was like I just kind of stood there oh yeah um, she was, was she like, was come on isn't this cool isn't this what you do <laughs> Heart? That, that is what you do is it? okay see I think I'm I think I'm getting into the the uh, embarrassing parent mode because I look at that and go that is what you do that's yeah, the thing you thank you for sympathizing I'm, you. I'm, I'm right there with you <laughs> ladies if you can't tell I'm such a big fan of yours and I'm a fan of the film and, and I think am I your first interview of the day yes oh beautiful yeah. okay well hopefully we started the day off right and uh, seriously, I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, have a wonderful day, guys. You too. I'm Jake Hamilton, Good Day Chicago. Ladies, so good to see you. The film is absolutely beautiful. Am I your first interview of the day? You are. How could oh you tell? Oh my God. Oh, because you're excited. <laughs> you're still into it. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah I got a yeah. thousand questions for you. So I'm going to jump into this. Um, you know, one of the things that I most love just about film is that there are amazing examples of how we can change as people. Like a movie I saw at 13, I now see differently at 34. And, and mm -hmm. this is going to be a movie where a 13 year old sees it one way. And then maybe 20 years later, they rewatch it and see it completely differently. So in a weird way, are you guys kind of making two different films because you're making a movie to see it one way and then you're making it to see another way 20 years later. 
Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, I mean, the like some of my favorite movies are the ones where I can revisit over and over again at different points of my life and take different things from it. And I think that's definitely the case with Turning Red as well. Um, yeah, like you said, like a like a tween or a teen going through <laughs> the ups and downs of puberty uh, will have a different takeaway from the movie than uh, you know, like like a new mom mm -hmm. or like a mom or a dad of, of teenagers, or even like, uh, like, like a grandparent, yeah. like I, that's, what's so awesome about the movie is that it like, there's something for everybody to kind of latch on and identify mm -hmm. with. And I think we just, I think as we're making it, we're not kind of intentionally being like, okay, we want to have, but I do think that it's, you know, the thought being is that you're not, we're trying not to exclude anyone, right. As mm -hmm. we're making it, meaning it needs to work for everyone at, at, and it can be at different levels, but the goal is to be like, if, even if you're not catching all of the nuance or the jokes, um, yeah. that's okay. You're still totally enjoy, enjoying it into the story. And then as you get older, you're going to be, yeah, layering it and catching on to like, oh my God, I didn't even notice that when I watched it when I was a kid, you know? I mean, that's why I love Pixar. Like I remember my parents taking me to see Toy Story when I was seven or eight and loved it for its own reasons. And now I'm 34 watching Turning Red and loving, loving it for completely different reasons. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I know Pixar movies often are filled with Easter eggs, both uh, sort of future and past movies are kind of hinted at sometimes. Yeah. I've always been curious, what, what is the process of picking what goes in? Like, do you guys have <laughs> meetings in advance where you say, okay, this character is gonna be in this corner and this character is gonna be in that corner? We do, it's it's both. So when the, we have now over the years established our, our like standard, we have our, our, you know, our standard set of Easter eggs, meaning if you don't do it, it's almost like uh, you have to wear, you know, you're, they're like your sure. lucky underpants or something, yes. you have to put them on. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, you have to have the What, what would be an ball. example of one of those? Like a Luxo ball. Like you yes. always have to have like the, yeah. the ball or like- Or the pizza planet the pizza truck. Planet yes. truck. Yes. And so everybody's really skilled at trying to figure out what the opportunity is and where to put that kind of stuff in. But then as feature films and as little special ones that we've done that maybe other shows have not done, mm -hmm. um, we did Spark Shorts ones yeah. in there. And then obviously we have Lightyear coming up. So those are ones we definitely talk about. Yep. Wait, is is Pizza Planet and Lightyear in the same? Because I've missed both in this film. Are they in the same shot or are they? They are not in the same shot. Oh, they are okay. in different shots. They're in different shots. You have to watch oh, it again. Oh, yeah. Like it. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Uh, yes. As we wrap up, you, you know that with a film like this, you're going to get to a point where you're not going to be able to go to any store in your life and not see some sort of turning red product, whether it's on a, a toy or on a, on, a, on a cereal box. or What is the strangest one you've seen so far? Or have you started to see them yet? Oh, I haven't started oh. to see them yet, but we, we have some good ones on this show. Yeah. Yeah. We have like the, the hot sauce is really great. We're excited Wait, is there turning red hot sauce? There yeah. is. Oh, yeah. I have to have some. Yeah. 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 It's the company fly by Jing and yes. we're doing like a collaboration with them. It's like spicy chili crisp oil yeah. uh, that I'm really excited. Yeah. About. So that's the one that you're like, yes. Yeah. How I, and I also really like the, like there's, um, there's a, a dad figurine oh yeah yeah which i thought was so funny because he just looks like such a cute like average asian dad <laughs> holding like oven mitts and like bow and i just think it's hilarious so somebody adorable. would choose that to be like just like i want to have that yeah figurine i want on my like, shelf. i want that's, asian dad. that's that's the action figure i want <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ladies, seriously, I could talk to you all day. Thank you for taking the time. I was your first interview of the day. Hopefully, hopefully we, we started your day you off a, right. You set a high bar. Yeah, Goal. we appreciate right. it. I appreciate you. Seriously, thank you for your time. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. All right, see you later. We're going, we don't need roads.